Air conditioning is a very good application for solar energy because when uh, you have the most solar radiation is when you need most air conditioning. Unlike solar space heating, which is the other way around, when you need space heating, most often you don't have enough uh, sun. Air conditioning has two basic functions. One is to lower humidity, the other is to lower temperature. Sometimes lowering humidity requires more energy and is more important than lowering the temperature, especially in humid climates like Florida. Most conventional air conditioning systems do not give you independent control of humidity and temperature. You have one thermostat and either you lower the temperature and then the humidity may not be right, or if you lower the temperature further, the humidity is going to be right, but then you may be too cold and will have to wear a sweater. Our system enables us to use solar energy for dehumidification. Photovoltaic cells are devices that convert sun radiation into electricity. Photovoltaic cell is like a sandwich. You have two collecting electrodes that are collecting the charges. In between, photoactive material that has possibility to absorb the sun radiation. Our contribution to the development of photovoltaic cells is development of special photoactive materials, usually a semiconductor. Semiconductor have two very important properties. One, it should conduct electricity, as its name. Second, it must absorb sun radiation, and in this process, convert the sun energy into uh, ch charges. So we develop very special semiconducting materials in the nanoscale. They are very small nanoparticles and inside this sandwich we spread them as a condensed film. What is very special about these very small nanoparticles is they have a extremely good absorption properties. Therefore they can absorb light very well. Now, depending on their size, we can change the range of their absorption. For example, if they are slightly larger, they will absorb the light in the infrared. If they're a little bit smaller, they will absorb the light uh, in the visible and also some into the UV. So we can manipulate the size of these nanoparticles as whether well their composition, what kind of atoms they are containing, and we can change the range of their uh, absorption. Our collaboration with uh, Professor Fat Lifshitz from the chemistry department is concerned with extending the coverage of the solar cells where normal solar cell would be really mainly active in the visible, a little bit beyond that, we can extend it to really the near infrared and to the medium infrared and this way capture a lot more light and produce more energy. The devices are micron scale, so we're not trying to make nanoscale devices. We're trying to use nanoscale understanding and capabilities to produce macro scale devices. And through the nano, we simply improve their properties and performance. In Israel, when you see solar panels, many of them are uh, really heating water for getting the shower in the middle of the night uh, nice and warm. But the other types of panels you could see would be made of mainly silicon. Instead of the silicon and hard uh, materials-based uh, solar cells, we're trying to develop uh, flexible type solar cells. They can be world-to-world -world printed like wallpaper and you can really spread them on miles and miles of uh, area and get a lot of the sun energy that's really spreading around without being used. So this way you can really lower the cost of making the devices and installing them and they can be used on rooftops and uh, any other place in, in you can take off. There is a huge need to increase the consumption of uh, solar energy. We have a huge potential, but we are not actually utilizing it. So it's urgent, really, to develop means to be able to utilize this uh, solar energy. Just like in the nano, where the Technion was playing a leading role in the academia in, in the, and in the industry, it's going to be the same uh, in energy. And basically, if you want to talk about history, then the microelectronics, which is the foundation of this nanoelectronic, was really laid out the foundation of all the microelectronics in Israel. So really, I think uh, we are on the right track.